A waiter. Yes, sir? I'll have a vegetable salad with cottage cheese, some toasted crackers, and a bottle of cold Pabst Blue Ribbon. Yes, sir. Finest beer served anywhere. From Hollywood, Pabst Blue Ribbon, finest beer served anywhere, proudly presents... Screen Directors Playhouse, production Whispering Smith, director Leslie Fenton, star Alan Ladd... Hollywood Screen Directors present an adventure of the Western Rails, Whispering Smith, starring Alan Ladd, and introduced by the director of the film, Leslie Fenton. Our guest screen director tonight is a gentleman who is equally adept on either side of the camera. As an actor, he enjoys the distinction of being perhaps the most black-hearted villain who ever scowled at a movie audience. And as a director, he's brought you such exciting film fare as Saigon, The Streets of Laredo, and tonight's story, Whispering Smith. Ladies and gentlemen, the villain who became a director, Mr. Leslie Fenton. Thank you. Tonight, fortunately, we're not concerned only with villains. Our story is fully equipped with a hero and all the other paraphernalia of a classic western. Plus the added ingredient of a railroad yarn. Altogether, it made pretty good entertainment for me as I sat behind the camera. Now, for the first time on the air, Whispering Smith, starring Alan Ladd in his original role. Two narrow bands of iron slashed through a sweeping roll of hills and valleys. The railway, piercing to the division point at Medicine Bend. Under a clump of trees outside the town, two men crouch in the shadows, watching a solitary mounted figure riding toward them alongside the railroad track. A few rays of sunlight glint brightly from the objects in their hands. Get your rifle ready, Roy. It's him, all right. Don't miss. Whispering Smith. He don't look so tough. Oh, he's tough, all right. Mm. Whispering Smith. Crazy name. He talks quiet, but his guns talk big. He ain't gonna talk no more. Now, get him good. Closer. Just a little closer. Now. You got him! Well, Mr. McLeod, I I see that number nine is right on schedule anyway. Yes, it is, Miss Sinclair. Hi there! Marion! Luke! Luke Smith! Whispering Smith. I didn't know he was coming in on number nine. Luke, I can't believe it. It's been years. Oh, a long, long time, Marion. How's Murray? Oh, he'll be so happy to see you. Uh, pardon me, Miss Sinclair. Would you mind introducing us? Oh, I'm, I'm sorry. Um, Luke Smith, Mr. McLeod, the, the new superintendent on this division. How do you do? I understand you've got trouble up this way. <laughs> Just ran into some myself. Oh, Luke, your, your arm, you've been hurt. Say, that's a bullet wound. Yeah, it just nicked me. Killed my horse, though. I flagged down number nine. Who did it? Guess it was somebody who didn't want me to get here. Well, if it isn't Whispering Smith. Oh. Hello, Rebstock. Mrs. Sinclair, McLeod. Rebstock. 
Smith, I'm kind of surprised seeing you here. Just a little business trip, Rebstock. There's nothing to be surprised about. Is it? No. Mr. Rebstock, he, he mustn't stand here. He's been shot. Come on, Luke. You need a doctor. <laughs> Just a little bandaging. Marion, huh? maybe you can do it for me. Luke, hurry up. A, a bullet wound like that can be dangerous. Yes, Smith. You want to remember? Bullets can be awfully dangerous. Oh, Luke. Luke, you're... You're still trying to fight the whole world single-handed, aren't you? Somebody's got to take care of trouble, man. It's always been you. Hmm. Where's Murray? There's been a wreck. He he got a gang out clearing the tracks. Here, you sit down here by this wash basin and take off that shirt. Uh, what would my best friend say about his wife holding my hand? We held hands before, Luke. A long time ago. You know, it's good to be here again, Mary. Good to have you, Luke. Even if it did take a bullet to bring you. Ouch! Oh, I'm sorry. There. Well, at least it's clean now, I'll manage it. <laughs> the towel will be pretty stiff, Luke. No, that's all right. The other one's my gun arm. There. Now you can put your shirt on. Thanks, man. Did you find everything all right, Miss Sinclair? Yes. Yes, thanks, Mr. Clark. Smith, I've got a train going out to the wreck. If you feel up to it, I'd like you to come along. Yeah, I'd like to come along, McLeod. You see, I've... I've got a few questions. Maybe I'll find a few more. You come highly recommended, Smith. I had a wire from the president of the road asking me to give you full cooperation. I understand the insurance company's been complaining. It's the unusual loss of property in train wrecks. Mm. In my division. <laughs> After the wrecks, a lot of freight disappears. We've traced some of it back. And where's it coming from? Rebstock. Know where he gets it? Maybe he buys it. Hmm. Who from? <laughs> You're the troubleshooter. Yeah, so suppose you tell me about any other troubles you might be having. Well, Murray Sinclair's one. My reckon, boss. Oh, I've known Murray since we were kids. Well, then maybe you can tell me how to handle him. I'm new on the division, and he doesn't like to take orders from me. Murray never took orders from anybody. There's something else, too. That ranch of his. Hmm? What about it? It's too big for a man on a railroad salary. Maybe he's just smart, McLeod. Anyway, that's none of our business. What else? Well, for one thing, his friends. Rebstock and that Williams Canyon outfit. Now, look. Out here, a man keeps on good terms with his neighbors. Even neighbors like Rebstock. <laughs> Well, here we are, Smith. This is the wreck. Bring that chain over here! I'll lift her easy. I we're clear to hang. This one's really smashed up, isn't it? Yeah, there's Sinclair over there by the wagon. All right, hurry it up, men. When you got a load, haul it up to Rebstock's place and come back. Right. Hey, Murray. Hey, Smitty! Hey, you old buzzard, you. What are you doing here? Uh, I'm just checking up on you. Uh, <laughs> I'd take three of you to check up on me. Hello, Sinclair. Uh, what that stuff you're loading onto that wagon? Just exactly what you see, McLeod. Damaged merchandise, mostly junk. Junk, huh? Personally, I'd call it loot. McLeod, I don't like that word. Long as there's been a railroad busted up, stuff like this has always been for the wrecking crew. Am I right, boys? All right, Murray, you're right. No, no, no. Take it easy, Murray. Mr. McLeod is right. This merchandise doesn't look damaged to me. You stay out of this, Smitty. This is between me and McLeod. No, Murray, this is between you and the railroad. And that cuts me in. Now, suppose you men start putting that stuff back on the ground. Get out of my way, Smith. I'm hauling this load out of here. Murray... You move those mules and I'll shoot them up from between the traces. Just what would you do without them guns of yours, Luke? We don't need guns to handle you, Sinclair. You're fired. Now clear out of here. All right, McLeod, I'm fired. But if you think you can run this division without me, go ahead and try. Just go ahead and try. <laughs> Track walkers discover five open switches in the last three days. Danger of wreck. Signed, McLeod. Report. Urgent. Cattle train derailed at Crawling Stone Flats. 200 head stolen. Signed, McLeod. Report. 
urgent. Number nine derailed by open switch. Fourth such accident in month. Signed, McLeod. I'm glad to see you. Nothing but accidents ever since you left. Only these aren't accidents, McLeod. Burned bridges, switches left open, journals sanded, freight lost in shipment. This is something that's all been figured out. Do we know who's doing it, Smith? Don't ask me that. Yes. Marion. Luke. Luke, I had to come to see you. Murray? Yes, he's been a different person ever since he left the railroad. Something dreadful's happened to him. And those men are the cause of it. Yes, I know. Rebstock's camp. Oh, Luke. Luke, tell me, is Murray one of them? I... I wish I could tell you no. Luke, isn't there anything you can do? Yes, if Murray will listen to me. You're his oldest friend. He must listen. You'd better go home, Marion. I think I know where to find him. But I'll have to go there alone. Oh, Mr. Sinclair, you're a boy. You're just a god. I'm Sorry. Huh? Ah, hello, Smitty. Join the party. You know Barney Rebstock. Sit down, Smith. Don't see much of you these days. What do you have? Not a thing, Rebstock. Murray, I'd like to talk to you. Alone, if your friends don't mind. We don't mind. Go ahead, Murray. Yeah. But don't crowd us too far, Smith. This will do, Murray. Come on, sit down. There. What's on your mind? A lot of things have been happening lately. I just came in from Crawling Stone Flats. You were there when that trainload of beef was ditched. Ah, you crazy. No, Murray. That saw a gelling of yours through a shoe. I, uh, I found it at the wreck. I also found the man who reshod your horse the next day. You figuring to tie me into that wreck? No. No, it's going to be tougher than that. I, I'm i figuring to give you some advice. Well, what do you know? The way I see it, Murray, you got off on the wrong foot with the wrong people. So Marion's been crying on your shoulder, huh? You and Reb Stock are in this up to your necks. Why don't you pull out, Murray? Pull out? It's a big country. Pull out and get a fresh start someplace. I'll cover your tracks. Sure. Me out of the way, the track would be clear for you and Marion. Slipped a long way, haven't you, Mary? Why, you... You... I get up, Smitty, and fight. What's the matter, Smith? You losing your touch? I don't want to fight you now, Murray. But get this straight. If there's one more train wreck anywhere on this line, I... I'm coming after you. And I'll get you, Murray. Even if it means killing my best friend. You are listening to the Screen Director's Playhouse production of Whispering Smith, starring Alan Ladd, and introduced by the director of the film... Leslie Fenton. You are in Dayton, Ohio. As you punch the time clock at the factory gate, you suddenly realize that your day's labors have left you hot, tired, and thirsty. You are a man with one purpose. You know just where you are going. Like a homing pigeon, you head straight for that little blue sign in the window across the street. Pabst Blue Ribbon. Finest beer served. Anywhere. Yes, during these late summer days, you're just one of millions of men all over America to whom that Pabst Blue Ribbon sign means welcome relief. For Pabst Blue Ribbon does something more than quench your thirst. It gives you taste. Blue Ribbon taste. The kind of taste you can't get anywhere else in the world except in that Pabst Blue Ribbon bottle. And, fortunately... You can get that Pabst Blue Ribbon bottle all over the world. Yes, you hear it everywhere. In Dayton and Dallas and Denver and Detroit. Pabst Blue Ribbon. 
finest beer served anywhere. Your taste will tell you why. Now back to our screen director's playhouse production of Whispering Smith, starring Alan Ladd. The story of the railroads and the West was a story of stirring action and thrilling drama. It was also the drama of men, two men, the friend who was good and the friend who was bad, and the woman who stood between. Quiet. Quiet, everyone. Now give me the details, McClellan. Well, the second section of number three. They jumped her while she was taking on water at Tower W. Killed the guard and got away with $60,000. They? Who's they? We don't know. They were all masked. A brakeman here, maybe of some help. Uh, it's hard to say, Mr. Smith. It all happened so fast, I... I'd, I'd, I'd... How many were there? No more than six. Any of them you know? Anybody you could identify? No. You see, they all had handkerchiefs over the... Wait a minute. Yeah, the one that blasted the guard. He, he had curly hair, sort of gray, and he talked kind of funny. Rebstock. You think it's him? This time we've got him. How many men of you can ride and shoot? Right there, yeah. Good. You, McLeod, order up an engine, have two stock cars spotted at the loading ground. Right away. And I want a clear track between here and Tower W. Put every westbound train on siding until we get by. Smith. Yeah? I can ride and shoot. As a special favor, let me come with you. I I feel that this is partly my fault somehow. Sure. Sure, McLeod. Be glad to have you. Now, the rest of you ride straight to Williams Canyon. Turn back anyone that tries to get in. We'll pick up the trail at Tower W. If this is Rebstock's squad, we ought to have them between us sometime in the afternoon. All right, boys, get going. <laughs> Is Murray Sinclair in this? I don't know. That's what I got to find out. I'll pick up with you, Williams Canyon. Hello, Mary. Hello, Luke. Murray home? No. Where is he? He, he rode out with Redstock last night. I, I talked with him last night, as you asked me to, and he finally promised that we'd go away. And then he, he got the idea of selling out to Redstock. Look, what's the matter? What happened? Early this morning, Redstock's outfit held up number seven at Tower W. They, they killed a guard. You think Murray was with them? Yes, I do, Marion. And I'm afraid there's going to be more bloodshed. You'd, you'd better pack up and go into town where it's safe. Where are you going, Luke? I'm going to Williams Canyon. All right, Sinclair. That's our cut. Five three, and I keep the cattle. <laughs> Your idea of a partnership deal doesn't come out too even, Rebstock. You wanted the cash, Sinclair. I've got to unload the merchandise and also take care of the boys. Okay, count it out. They're coming, Barney. What? what do you mean, breaking in on us this way? It's Smith with a posse. Fifteen, maybe twenty of them at the mouth of the canyon. Oh, I don't know about you, Rebstock, but I'm getting out of here. Running, huh, Sinclair? You bet and fast. Come on, hand over my split. What's your hurry? Don't you trust me? I said hand it over. I don't like being rushed. See? Put down that gun, Rebstock. one of his own men. Yeah, look at these crates piled around. Stolen freight from our train wrecks. This is the gang, all right. Come on, let's go. Up. Look, down below. They're cutting back through the canyon. Oh, boy. Oh, oh. 
Hand me that rifle, Claude. There are three of them. Steady. You got one. You got two. And the third one's in fire. Get him, Smith. Shoot! Judy's getting away. What's the matter? He's out of range. Out of range? You could have hit him with a bean shooter. I said he was out of range. Sell out and go away. Well, what are you waiting for? You. You were at Tower W. What do you know about Tower W? Who told you? Come on, who told you? Murray, don't leave. Was it Smith? Was he here? Yes. Yes. Why, you. (laughs) So that. Had your bags all packed. You were running out on me. No, no, Murray, no. I was only going to. Get away from that window. Don't worry. Don't shoot. If you do, they'll never stop till they hang you. Then you get out. Come on, get rid of them. If you don't, I will. I'll send them away. Marion. In here, Marion, quick. The wagon shut. Luke. Why didn't you go into town like I told you? Well, I... I had to change my clothes. I, I had things to do. I suppose that Murray hasn't come back yet. No. No, he hasn't. You're lying, Marion. Murray's in the house, isn't he? Yes. But he's hurt, Lou, badly. McLeod, get the doc. Hey, right away. And you go with him, Marion. Get in that buckboard. I'll... I'll see what I can do for Murray. No, Lou, don't go in there. Murray's crazed. He's like a madman. Get that buckboard out of here fast. Go. Come on, yeah. Have a careful, Smith. I'm coming in. I'm coming in to help you, Murray. Murray. Murray, I'm coming in to help you. Is it bad? Yeah. Bad. Take it easy, Murray. Doc will be here soon. You're wasting his time. That last one cut me pretty near in half. (laughs) Sorry, Luke. Forget it. Well, that's how it goes. You you gotta have the brakes. You had them all, Murray? Well, anyway, I I had one. I had Marion. That's one break you didn't get. Please. Please take it easy, Murray. Get me a drink, huh? On the table. Sure. Turn around, Luke. Slow. I... I thought I had your guns, Murray. Teach you never to turn your back, Luke. Go ahead. Go ahead and shoot. Hurry! Murray! Oh, Murray. If there'd been any other way, I'd have played it different. You know that, don't you? The only cards I had were... were the ones you dealt me. You have just heard the last act of the Screen Director's Playhouse production of Whispering Smith, starring Alan Ladd. In a moment, our star, with Screen Director Leslie Fenton, will return to the microphone. 
They call Hollywood the land of make-believe. But when most of the movie stars are home in their own backyards, they lead normal, everyday lives, just like you and me. When they entertain, it's on a simple scale and in perfect taste. For instance, an afternoon at gin rummy or sitting around a pool is usually accompanied by tasty sandwiches and, of course, cold bottles of Pabst Blue Ribbon beer. As a radio announcer, I get around quite a bit in Hollywood, and I'm mighty happy to report that I see Pabst Blue Ribbon beer, well, just about everywhere, in the homes of my motion picture friends, in the homes of orchestra leaders, musicians, cameramen, radio announcers, and in the best restaurants all over town. Yes, Pabst Blue Ribbon is not only a favorite here in Hollywood, but it's known the world over as the finest beer served anywhere. Your taste will tell you why. Next week on Screen Directors Playhouse, Pabst Blue Ribbon presents for the first time on the air the motion picture comedy... Don't Trust Your Husband, and our star will be Fred McMurray. Now, here again is tonight's star, Alan Ladd, and screen director, Leslie Fenton. Les, I've been thinking about the way they introduced you at the beginning of the program. Oh, you mean that stuff about my acting? Well, from what I heard, you used to play the most fiendish villains that ever snarled at a hero. Well, that's just acting, Alan. Now you always play the part of a hero, but I never snarl at you, do I? No, but you come out on the set and say, Alan, play it like this or play it like that. (laughs) But, Alan, that's my job. But you always do it so darn well. How can a villain like you play such a fine hero? Alan, maybe it's because I really have a beautiful soul. Hmm? Okay, beautiful. But maybe it's because you're a great actor and a swell director. Well, thanks, Alan. Good night, Mr. Villain. Good night, Mr. Hero. Good night, folks. And good night to you, Alan Ladd and screen director Leslie Fenton. When you buy your weekend supply of beer tomorrow morning, ask your dealer to show you Pabst Blue Ribbon's new Handy Six carton with a cleverly designed new easy-to-carry handle. It contains six regular-sized cans of Pabst Blue Ribbon. Finest beer served anywhere. Ask for the Handy Six tomorrow. Whispering Smith was presented through the courtesy of Paramount Pictures, whose current release is Top of the Morning, starring Bing Crosby, Anne Blythe, and Barry Fitzgerald. Alan Ladd will soon be seen in the Paramount picture, Chicago Deadline. Included in tonight's cast were Ira Grossell, Michael Ann Barrett, Harley Bear, Herb Butterfield, Peter Leeds, Vic Perrin, and Dan Riss. Whispering Smith was adapted for radio by Warren Lewis, and original music was composed and conducted by Henry Russell. Portions of tonight's program were transcribed. Screen Director's Playhouse was produced by Howard Wiley with dramatic direction by Bill Karn. Listen again next week when Pabst Blue Ribbon presents Screen Director's Playhouse Production, Don't Trust Your Husband Director, Lloyd Bacon Star, Fred McMurray Screen Director's Playhouse is brought to you by the Pabst Brewing Company of Milwaukee, Wisconsin, Newark, New Jersey, and Peoria, Illinois, and sent your way with the best wishes of the Pabst Blue Ribbon dealers from coast to coast. James Wallington speaking. You're tuned for the stars on NBC. NBC.